My friends, this HD28 Martin is finally finished. This was a major project, which you will see a full video series on down the road. But to hear all the detail on how this thing turned out, what I did to it, and all that, and to find out the next project in line, stay tuned till right after this. friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is Monday, September 19th. Yeah, the HD28 turned out really well. Uh, golly, I did a ton of work to this thing. I started out by putting a new bridge plate in this. I put in a large Paduke bridge plate, which incidentally is smaller than a recent Martin that was in the shop, which had a rosewood bridge plate from the factory. And that bridge plate was even bigger than the bridge plate I put in this guitar, which I put in a fairly large one uh, made out of Paduke, which is a really good sound material. I also made a brand new uh, ebony bridge for this. I, it's a custom made ebony bridge. And I wanna tell you a little bit more about that here in just a moment. I also took the neck out of this and reset the neck. So you're talking about major surgery. This thing's been through major surgery and it really did turn out very nicely. I'm very happy with it. Before I go into a little more detail on this, I thought I'd tell you about the projects I have coming up. Here is a guitar and that's about all I can tell you about it. I, I don't see a brand in here, but if I was guessing, I'd say a silver tone or something like that. Oh, it's got some, it's got letters down here in the corner. C E B, but that looks like that might be somebody's initials been added on. So I can't really tell you much about that. I don't really see a, a badge or anything on the head and I don't see any labels on the inside. But I think this is a sentimental fix for Gary Haven, who is our guitar player in our band. It's been sitting on the shelf since July 15th. So this will be my first time to look at it. So we're gonna put it back in good shape. I'll have to talk with Gary to see how far he wants to go. Yeah, it's really in bad shape. You can see it's coming apart in a lot of places and uh, needs a lot of TLC. But uh, here's kind of your sneak preview before and hopefully in a while we'll have it much better shape. Also on the shelf, I have three other instruments. Uh, the next one in line is uh, one of the mandolins that I built. It's a Rosa mandolin and it's been returned. This is probably the fifth time. You know, I gotta be honest with you, I've never found a real problem with it in any of the times it's been returned. But he keeps returning it and uh, he wants me to put a whole new fingerboard on it. Well, I told him I wouldn't do it at my cost because there's nothing wrong with it. I, I really am just so frustrated, I wish I'd never sold that mandolin. Now, I don't know when it got here exactly, but the next one in line after it got here on July 26th. So this one was the 15th, that one's July 26th, so it came in between these two. He said it's been here three months already. Well, that doesn't sound like three months to me, but uh, you know, sounds exactly like two months. I wish none of them would sit here that long, but I've slowed everything way down and I'm not working near the hours that I used to be working and the hands give me trouble, so it just is what it is. Then after that one, after the Rosa Mandolin, there is another, uh, looks like a mandolin. I can't see it very well. It's up on its edge. It's not in a case. It, it doesn't look like a standard, you know, like F5 or something. It looks like a unique one. And then it looks like there's a small guitar or something in a case up there. So I've got like three more on the shelf after this one. So let me go back into this HD28 and tell you more about that. What I really wanted to concentrate on is this bridge. Now, you know, this bridge had been cut down and it's very possible I cut it down uh, 15 years ago or whatever when I moved the bridge because this was one of those deals where the bridge was in the wrong place. And in order to get the thing to intonate properly, I had to turn this bridge crooked. And so this bridge has been on this guitar for the last 15 years, but it's been crooked because I had to do it that way to get the intonation right. And so you would say, well, why would you have to do that? Well, the saddle slot is just your standard saddle slot. It's cut in there like most of them are. 
But if you look at this one, the slot has got a bigger angle to it. So that's why, you know, now that this one's cut with a bigger angle, then I don't have to put the bridge on crooked because I made this one custom. So I put the bridge on square, then I cut the saddle slot, which put the saddle slot at the perfect angle for this thing to intonate. This thing intonates almost perfectly. And when I say almost, there's no such thing as perfect, but it's real, real close. It's as close as you'll ever find in an acoustic guitar in terms of intonation. Now, I tuned it 30 minutes or so ago, so I, I'm assuming it's still in tune, but I haven't checked it. Got a real good sound. Just needs to be played in now. The action's really good. It's about 90 and 80, and uh, actually it's a little lower than that, on, uh, but I think that'll be fine. It doesn't seem to be buzzing at all. I know that uh, Leon is the owner of this. He plays the banjo in our band, and Leon's a real hard player, so I don't want to go any lower than that for the action, and even that might be a little low for him. got a good sound and as, as I said you'll see a full series on this I would imagine it'll be at least three videos if not four or more I wanted to add in here that I wanted to say thank you for all the nice comments and compliments on fixing the neck on that J Ford mandolin you can see that uh, in part three there it came a long way and was turning out really nice of course, there will still be a part four on that J4 mandolin, so be watching for that. I'll be sure to have Emery work on that next, and we'll try to get that out as soon as possible. Uh, it really did turn out really nice. I've heard from the customer, and I believe he just absolutely loves it. Uh, I might just throw in also on that two-point mandolin, if you remember, that had the huge hole in the neck, and the neck was creeping because of all the glue. Uh, and I put in a dovetail on that, if you remember that one. I've heard indirectly from the customer. In other words, I heard from someone he recommended to me. Uh, that person said that uh, the fellow is absolutely in love with that two-point mandolin, and this other fellow is going to bring me an instrument based on his recommendations. So that's high praise, and I appreciate that very much. But I thought you might be interested to hear the follow-up on that. And under the category of something completely random, look at this. That HD28 that I just finished, look at the handle on here. <laughs> Leon uh, had uh, taped this up because the handle had broken right in two. Well, I have a fix for this that's a little better than what we've got right here. So I'm going to turn this around where you can see it and we'll do the fix on that really quick. The way I have to get this off here is to cut this off. And, you know, I don't know of any good way to cut it off, so I'm just going to take a Dremel tool and, and try that. So here we go. There we go, we got rid of that. This thing, like I said, this is broke completely in half, so we'll just get rid of it, throw it away. Here's a new strap-on handle, or buckle handle, that we can put on here. This is a leather handle. The old one was plastic, so this is really kind of an upgrade, in my opinion. Might as well get them both unbuckled first. And we'll slide them both through. They have an extra flap there for thickness. You want to be sure that that extra flap is getting around the metal on the case there so that it doesn't wear out. Here's that extra flap I'm talking about. And so we gotta make sure that that gets around this little metal piece here. And make sure it goes under there like that and then fold this back through and bingo brand new handle on the, on the case so now in addition to a basically brand new HD28 that he's got now he's got a brand new handle for it too <laughs> And lastly, before we go, I just wanted to say thank you for all the nice comments on my hydraulic brush hog I made too. That thing 
<laughs> it's worth its weight in gold around here. I use it all over the place. I use it on trails. You can reach up and grab tree limbs that are in the way. Like when you're riding your horses through these trails, your trails need to be pretty high, you know? And so you can reach up and knock down big limbs and cut them right off. And it's really a nice, nice outfit for that bobcat. No, it's not as heavy duty as one you could buy, but it didn't cost me anything like one you could buy either. <laughs> So it works pretty good. I really haven't found much that it won't cut down. I, I can seriously walk up to a tree this big around and start at the top and just come right down and just mow it to the ground. It's amazing. And the advantage of the, that type of brush hog over the kind that's driven by your PTO is this one will stop when it hits something hard. That's why you can just go down on the tree. If you, get, if you push it too fast and you hit something solid, it just stops doesn't break anything. On the PTO driven one, if you hit something solid, it's going to break something. You know, something's going to give on those. Where on the hydraulics, it just stops, which is really cool. Okay, well, that's about it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. We'll see you tomorrow.